individual performance. Stay tuned for the championship game coming at breakfast, at which time the tournament queen is crowned, and all 16 squads are on hand to salute her. Governor Robert D. Ray gives the official greetings to the girls. The 1972 queen could not be more qualified. She's Judy Center, an all-state forward who came into the tournament as the fourth all-time scorer in her school's rich basketball history. But that's only part of the story. Queen Judy is a championship softball pitcher, having won 93 games, including 16 no-hitters. She's a straight-A student in school, owning a perfect four-point average. She was chosen on the high school all-star band, is an organist for her church. She's on the staff of her school newspaper, officer in 4-H, president of the National Honor Society. Thursday afternoon, following the breakfast, Judy led her Guthrie Center teammates to a record-breaking triple overtime, 77-75 win over Minneapolis. And this is one reason why they call this the greatest girls basketball tournament on earth. Governor Robert D. Ray and his family are rabid basketball fans and they intend every tournament finals. Iowa is noted for its leadership in girls athletics. Not just basketball, for which it's been famous for many years, but all athletics. No state can match Iowa's record for interest and participation in girls sports. And this 1972 all sports parade of champions testifies to that fact. In addition to the other members of the Sweet 16 that did not make it into the final round, we are here seeing champions of all other meets and events conducted under auspices of the Girls State High School Athletic Union. During the past year, a total of 1,892 teams competed for the 13 championships in girls and co-ed sports. These include indoor and outdoor track, which alone have more than 10,000 girls competing every year in the state of Iowa. Distance running, swimming, gymnastics, golf, tennis, volleyball, softball, and of course basketball. Other members of the Sweet 16 we're looking at on the floor right now who did not make it to the final round of four include Manson, Hinton, Everly, Rockford, last year's champion Farragut, Albia, Iowa Valley of Marengo, Manila, Montezuma, which set a 90-game record last year, Laverne, Ogden, and West Branch. Few athletic tournaments and championship games anywhere in the country can match the color and pageantry that surround the final night of girls basketball in Iowa. And this is a good example. The presentation of the flags of all 50 states done in March Temple with intricate floor maneuvers and accompanied by the song of each state and a brief reading for each one on the nation of the colors. And no marching group anywhere does this more effectively and beautifully than the Des Moines Stepperettes, five-time national champions in precision drill competition. The blending of the 50 state flags into one ceremony, coupled with the presentation of the colors by the Stepperettes, all of this arranged and performed by high school students, signifies the unity that athletics can bring to our society and the vast resourcefulness and accomplishment of our young people. And where else can these talents better be put on display than before this packed auditorium of 15,000 fans and the hundreds of thousands who are watching on an eight-station television network covering all or part of nine different Midwest states. Girls basketball, it's been said, was the outgrowth of a strong desire for recognition by the smaller communities of the state many years ago and also by a strong desire by young ladies to engage in athletic competition, just as do men. Both of these twin goals, or motivating forces, long since have been expanded and refined, so that now, not only the smallest towns in the state, but some of the largest towns and largest schools receive equal recognition. And the tremendous growth and popularity of girls' athletics throughout the state testify to the fact that there is both a need and a desire for a broad-based program on girls' athletics throughout our high school system. <clears throat> These people tonight are seeing the best of that competition perform. But for every girl here, thousands of others throughout the state who had the benefit of a competitive program in athletics as well as a sound program in academics and extracurricular activities. And now as the Des Moines Stepperettes perform in their precision marching and prepare to show the colors of the flag raising on Iwo Jima in facsimile. Remember that girls basketball has achieved its recognition as one of the most exciting sports you'll find any place. Shooting, passing, fast maneuvering. As an example, the girls' record for a single game scoring is 93 points. For three games, 218 points. And that's hard to find anything to compare with that in the realm of boys' high school basketball or male athletics. So the girls can be proud of what they are doing and have done here in the state championship meet.
Roland Story versus Guthrie Center for the state championship. And now the girls represented by their captains meet with the floor officials in the court. The crowd eagerly awaits the start of the championship game. For Roland Story at forward, it'll be Kathy Kameen, a five foot ten junior who averaged 41 points a game during the season. Sharon Nelson also at forward, six feet tall and a senior. The other forward is number 43, Janet Gregg, five feet five and a senior. In the guard court for Roland Story, Janice Brotham, five feet ten and a senior. Karen Ritland, five feet seven and a junior. And Debbie Sampson, five feet six and a junior. Coach of Roland Story is Bill Hennessy. For Guthrie Center at forward, Judy Merritt, five feet seven, a senior, averaged 41 points a game. Vanessa Wickland, five feet five and a senior. Rounding out the forward court, Barb Clifford, five feet four and a senior. In the guard court for the Tigerettes, Sue Taylor, five feet six and a senior. Linda Alexander, five feet seven and a senior. Connie Holler, five feet eight and a senior. Coach of Guthrie Center, Rich Hanson. The ball will be put in play in the Roland Coyer front court. Roland Story front court. And it's Janet Grigg now over to Sharon Nelson, number 51. Here's Kathy Kameen. Out to Janet Grigg. The set shots by Cook. And she connects right off the bat. That's her favorite spot on the floor. Two to nothing. Roland Story in the early lead here. Two Central Iowa unranked powers who have become state tournament powers very quickly. All right, in the forecourt now for Guthrie Center. They work it around out there, and it's Judy Merritt. Number 42, the gal to keep your eye on. Barb Clifford, she's the key. Merritt, she shoots. No good. Janet Brotham, one of the top guards in the state. Five feet ten. Janet Brotham, 0-1. Pulled down that rebound. Watch her tonight. Into the post of Nelson. Loses control of the ball, and a charging foul on Nelson, number 51. Aaron Nelson is six feet tall. That's an offensive foul, so the guards will put it in play out of the backcourt of Guthrie Center, Linda Alexander, County Hollard, and Sue Taylor. Number 22, Linda Alexander throws it over. That's Merritt. Again, you know, working it around over to Vanessa Wickland. Fall away, jump shot, Barb Clippers. Way over the top and down. And for the second straight time, Brotham grabs that rebound. Four court now, Sharon Nelson, number 51, over to Kameen. Off on her shot, out of bounds it goes, and it'll be played down by Guthrie Center Tigerettes are wearing white uniforms, their guard. And Alexander, number 23, 22 rather, number uh, 22 for Linda. Across the line, Guthrie Center, Barb Clifford, Judy Merritt. Clifford to Wickland. Wickland pops it up there. Good. She ties it. Vanessa Wickland, number 40. There's the first scoring here. Forgot to send of the Tigerettes, two, and the Norseman, two. Janet Gregg. No good on that one. And Tommy Hollard's off for the rebound. Judy Merritt. On the front, a drive in by Clifford is no good. Rothman got the rebound, but lost control of it. And now Merritt's fall away jump shot over the top and down. Into the hands of Karen Ritland, number 35. Roland Story with it. The Norseman have it at four court. Judy Gregg. Kameen. Nelson. Good. Sarah Nelson on a swing around jump makes it a four to two game. In favor of the Roland Story Norseman. Now Merritt with the ball. Over to Clifford. Back to Wickland. And here's Clifford on a nice fast break. Triple handoff play. Four to four. 5.39 to play in the first quarter. Kameen over to Nelson. Out to Greg. Here's that set shot. Kameen tried to get the rebound that time. Taken away from her by Connie Hollard. Linda Alexander throws it across the line to Vanessa Wickland. Back to Clifford and now to Vanessa. Here's Vanessa Wickland's shot. Hops in and out and drops to it. Top of the circle shot. Six to four. Got the center in the lead. And the offense is predominating here. Kathy Kameen to Nelson. Spins around, there's Kathy. Kameen, great wrist action on that shot. She's fouled. Linda Alexander charged with a foul. One thing to watch, 
as we stressed Larry on our earlier broadcast this week is the fact that Kameen has great wrist action on her shot. She uh, shoots the guarded shot very well. Yes she does Jim and she's going to have to because they're going to play her player real tight right now they're sagging sagging off of Greg and uh, trying to help out on Nelson and Kathy Kameen scores and it's six to five now with Guthrie center out in front by one point. Here come the guards for Guthrie into four court. Vanessa Wicklund, number 40. Off to Judy Merritt, number 42. Fall away jumper by Merritt. Those are the kinds she makes all night. A fall away shot from about 16 feet out. She's the tournament queen also. Eight to five is the score now. Guthrie center out in front, and here is Greg trying to shot. Janet Gray followed through by Kameen. Here's Greg. Kathy Kameen picks up her third point, and it's an eight to seven game. Guthrie center by one. Judy Merritt, lead pass to Clifford. Back to Judy Merritt. She's open by a mile. And you can't give her those kind of openings or she'll kill you. Ten to seven. Judy Merritt puts her team in front by three. Kathy Kameen to Nelson to Kameen. Screenshot Kameen. Hung up there for a moment and drops through. Both teams are hitting now. At a good clip. Ten, and, uh, ten to nine score. Got the center with a ball and a one point lead. Clifford drops it. They scramble for it. She's allowed to pick it up again. Over to Merritt. Merritt's fall away jumper goes through the hoop, but a foul call on Janice Brotham in the meantime. Foul on Brotham. The one shot foul proceeded the basket. Barb Clifford up there. And it's an 11 to 9 lead now in favor of Guthrie Center. The Norsemen have it in four court. Nelson over to Kameen. Kameen's shot is a good one. And it's 11 to 11. High ball game. Now, Merritt, high arching shot. That one comes down and it's tied up. Janice Proctor will jump against Clifford. Five feet 10 against five feet four. And the five feet 10 predominates. Karen Whitland throws it over the line. Nelson to Kameen. Starts her drive. Feeds out to Greg. Janet Greg back to Kameen. Has the ball popped out of her hands and a foul is called. Foul on number 30, Sue Taylor in the guard court of Guthrie Center. That'll put Kathy Kameen at the line. <laughs> Kathy Kameen spells her name C or K A double M I N. Here's Kathy Kameen. Linda Alexander grabbed the rebound that time in the white that goes across the line. Guthrie Center score tied at 11. At the center has the ball. Merritt. Clifford. Pat. Shot is partly blocked with a great defensive play by Janice Brotham. The ball goes out of bounds. Touched by Valley Rivers. Last touch by Rickland. So it'll be played into the forecourt of Grefty Center. Over to Judy Merritt. Vanessa Wickland. Shoots. Scores. Vanessa Wickland puts Grefty Center out of front. 13 to 11. Sharon Nelson with the ball now. Over to Janet Gregg. Kameen to Nelson. Back to Kameen. Nice play. Ball goes through the hoop. Basket will count. And a foul is called. <laughs> foul on Taylor. That's her second. Kameen's free throw. And now it's Roland Story leading by one point, 14 to 13. Taylor, the guard throws it across the line to Merritt, to Clifford, to Vanessa Wicklund. Here's Wicklund with the ball. Out to Clifford again and now to Merritt. Underneath, very good play. And Clifford tries the shot. Rebounded by Guthrie Center. Four court. Here's Judy Merritt. Good. Automatic Judy Merritt gets her third field goal and sixth point of the night and puts her team ahead. Guthrie Center 15 to 14. Kameen. Clips the net. Kathy and Kameen comes right back again as they continue their torrid shooting. And it's a 16 to 15 game roll in story in front. 216 to play in the first quarter. Clifford screens. Merritt shoots. Merritt scores. We're going to be saying that a lot tonight, I imagine. Eight points now for Judy Merritt. Merritt got 41 points as her average for the season. Shot good. Janet Gregg now has 16 points for Roland Story. And it's an 18 to 17 game Roland Story. Off the bracket by Judy Merritt. But Clifford puts the Clifford through. Clifford put it through and it's now 19 to 18. 
Wickland, correction. Wickland that time and a whistle blows. Basket drops to the hoop. And a foul is caught. Back to Kameen. The basket's good by Kameen. Foul is on Linda Alexander. 20 to 19. Make it 21 to 19 in favor of Roland Story. 138 left to go, first quarter. Now the guards bring it out. Four got three center. Connie Holler, number 14, across the line. Vanessa Wicklund as it drives down, lays it up. Hits the glass with too much force, and Janice Brockton, 0-1, has the rebound to Nelson, to Kameen. Back to Greg again. To Kameen. Is that a long one by Kathy Kameen? Rebound picked off by Sue Taylor. Now in the fourth court, Wickland over to Clifford. Charging foul on Wickland. Redland will throw it in, number 35. Debbie Sampson to Redland. Sharon Nelson over to Kameen. Here's Nelson. Nelson makes it her fourth point and gives Roland Story a four point lead now, 23 to 19. 44 seconds to go, first quarter. Bob Merritt tries it. Merritt has it again. Clifford now to Wickland. Clifford again. Merritt. A little bit off on a shooting. She was making those guys last night. Janet Brockland tied up. Once again with Clifford. 5 feet 11 versus 5 4 on the jump ball. 21 seconds remaining, first quarter. And would you believe the team that had the shorter girl jumping gets the ball? At three center. Wickland. Tried to drive in. Here's Barrett with the ball. It pops out of bounds. It'll be played up court. Uh, Karen Rutland will throw it in now for Roland Stork. Gold Story leads by four, 23 to 19. Rollin. Debbie Sampson throws it across the line. Janet Gregg takes it. There's the end of the first quarter. Of course, they make no effort to shoot. Because in the girls' ball, they retain possession between quarters. At the end of the first quarter, championship game, score, Roland Story, 23, Guthrie Center, 19. Well, Larry, we're seeing some evidence of the scoring power we were talking about, 23 to 19 at the end of the first quarter. We sure are, Jim. In a game like this, you can't you can't afford to go two or three minutes out scoring either. Right off the bat, Janet Gregg takes a set shot, and it's now rolling the story, leading by six, their biggest margin, 25 to 19. Jeffrey Center, Vanessa Wickland puts it in play. Judy Merritt. Merritt is the key, and when she's off on her shooting, it could be in trouble. Clifford is fouled by number 21, Debbie Sampson. Barb Clifford will go to the line. Karen Rittman with the rebound. Nolan Story. Janice Prantham throws it across the line. Sharon Nelson. Kameen. Nelson. Kameen. Kameen up. Tries it again. Great second effort. 27 to 19. Their biggest margin so far. Roland Story in front of Guthrie Center. Clifford with the ball. Merritt. Added by Brotham. 27 to 21. Both these teams have great capabilities of coming from behind. They're so explosive. Kameen. Come Greg. Back to Kameen, the screen shot. Kameen makes a fine save on the ball. Nelson to Greg, moved her pivot foot, traveling. 27 to 21. Here's the score with Roland Story out in front, the Norseman leading the Tigerettes. The gals in white from Guthrie Center. Merritt with the ball to Clifford. Back to Merritt. Here's Wickland. Double handling the ball there, picks it back up. Wickland. She's fouled by number 21, Debbie Sampson. She went down the lane, get ready for the shot. 
633 left to play first Four. half. The score, Rolling One Story 27, the Deputy Center 21. Wickland at the line. Karen Redland has the rebound, number 35. Coming over to Greg. Out of Sharon Nelson, back to Greg again. Kameen takes it to Nelson. Nelson's hook shot falls into the arms of Linda Alexander and it goes across the line up to Vanessa Wickland, uh, to Clifford. Kamara. Back to Clifford again. Kamara. Having trouble with that fall away jump shot of hers. Karen Rittman takes the bullet, makes a bullet pass after grabbing the rebound. Kameen with it to Greg. Kameen. Both teams have a trouble putting it through, and now Nelson has a shot, and out of bounds it goes. Touched. Touched by Guthrie Center, number 22, Linda Alexander, got a piece of that ball. Kameen. Rolling story in the lead, and they have possession of the ball. Janet Gregg to Kameen. Gregg. Nelson, back to Kameen. Nelson tried to throw the lead pass to Nelson that was deflected and picked off by Sue Taylor. Now here's the fast break for Guthrie Center. Merritt to Clifford. Again over the top and down, and Janice Brathen gets the rebound. Denny Sampson across the line. Kameen to Greg. Kameen. To Nelson, the ball flicked away and picked up by Kameen. Action continues. Kameen misses and Greg puts it up there. No good. Traveling called on Greg. All of a sudden, both teams have gone ice cold. And for starting out of the first quarter, about as hot as you could be. Sue Taylor takes the ball across the line. Wickland. Clifford. Merritt. There's Merritt again. Clifford. Beautiful fake by Clifford as she got Ritland to run by her and then took the shot. 27 to 23. Rolling story with a four point lead. They had the ball in four court. Kameen over to Greg. They give Greg the shot. She takes it. She makes it. 29 to 23. They seem to be warming up again here. Rolling story leads. 29 23. Clifford has the ball passes to Merritt. Merritt is fouled by number 21, Debbie Sampson. Larry, the teams have gotten a bit cold after some hot shooting in the first quarter. Well, Jim, they're doing a real good job on, uh, on Merritt because every time she has the ball and sets the screen, they're popping right out before she can eat. Shoot the ball before she can pass it off. Number 42 at the free throw line is Judy Merritt. Merritt last night made 16 out of 17 for the line in the victory over Everly. She hits her second free throw. It's a 29 to 24 game. Rolling story with a five point lead. The ball goes to forecourt. Nelson to come in. With the weave pattern out there. And here's Greg. Gets a blows and a charging foul. It's called on Kathy Kameen. Hi, Black. Got three center out of bounds with the ball. 403 to go. First half. Sue Taylor to Clifford. To Vanessa Wickland. To Judy Merritt. Shovel shot by Merritt, and she doesn't make that one. Rebounded by Ritland. Nice recovery there. Over to Greg. To Mead. To Greg. To Nelson. Guards doing a great job of forcing the gals off balance. Four court now for Guthrie Center, and. Finally, Vanessa Wickland clips the net on about a 17-footer. 29 to 26, three-point lead for Roland Story. Timeout called by Roland Story. And she doesn't like to do that. Here's Kameen with the ball into Nelson. Roland Story has it to Greg. Janet Greg. And it's Connie Howard with a rebound over to Sue Taylor. Now to four court, Barb Clifford, Vanessa Wickland, Merritt. Merritt's fouled by Janice Brockett. 
one 29 flat. to 26 is the score. Roland Story leading. Guthrie Center, three minutes to play in the first half. State championship game in Iowa girls basketball for 1972. <laughs> Judy Merritt's not happy over missing these free throws. Tony missed one last night. The victory over Everly. That makes it a 29 to 27 game. With the gals in black for Roland Story holding the lead at the present time. Nelson takes the ball over the line <coughs> to Kameen. To Greg. Kameen. Kameen. Greg. And it's Greg doing the shooting. He pops it through. Eight points now for Janet Gregg. 19 for Kathy Kameen. Clifford. Great shot by Judy Merritt. Judy Merritt picks up her 14th point. 31 to 29. A two-point lead for Roland Story and the Norsemen have the ball. Kameen. 2.09 to play. First half. Greg to come in. Here's come in. Shot was partially blocked. And it goes out of bounds being awarded in. The roll of story in four court. And the Guthrie Center fans don't quite agree with that. Greg is open. She loves that shot right from the free throw line or a little bit above it. 33 to 29. Roll of story leads. Merritt. Rebound is taken by Debbie Sampson. Nelson to Greg. Nelson again along the baseline. And Nelson spun around a charging foul. Called on Nelson. That's her second foul. Scoring Kathy Kameen with 19. Janet Gregg with 10. We in, uh, correctly identified Janet Gregg as having that total earlier. But it is Kathy Kameen with a total of 19. Now here's Clifford with the ball for Guthrie Center. Wickland. Vanessa Wickland. And once again, we have a two-point ball game, 33 to 31. Roland Story has the ball in a two-point lead. 110 left to go in the first half. Greg to Kameen, over to Nelson. Back to Kameen again. Ball tipped away by Sue Taylor. Kameen gets it back. Shot is no good. Nelson gets the rebound. Out to Greg. Kameen now tries for the rebound. The ball is batted around, and Sue Taylor makes a great retrieve over the line. It's a round of applause for the fans here. Merritt, Clifford, Wickland, ties the score. Four tied at 33. 38 seconds to go in the first half. Just as close and as tight and exciting as everybody predicted it would be. Kathy Kameen. To Greg. Nelson. Greg has the ball. Tight guarding underneath there, and Nelson is tied up. Fine defensive job by Connie Holler, number 14. He tied up six foot tall Sharon Nelson. Holler's five feet eight. Hi, right, here we go. It'll be a jump ball. Nelson gets the tip easily. Kameen takes it back again to Greg. Nine seconds to play, first half. Nelson looks. A top. Puts Roland Story ahead. And the halftime score is Roland Story 35, Guthrie Center 33. Eight of the greatest former stars of Iowa High School girls basketball are officially inducted into the Hall of Fame. These ladies range in their playing years from 1920 through 1965. The All-State Tournament team has announced Judy Merritt of Guthrie Center, Debbie County of West Central, Kathy Kameen of Roland Story, Diane Lux of Everly in the forward court. The guards, four of them, truly All-Staters, Gail Meyer of West Central of Maynard, Janice Brotham of Roland Story, Jean Stolze of Hinton, Joanne Smidgall of Mediapolis. We advance to the last half of action of girls basketball in Iowa 1972. 
And the ball is put in play in the forward court of Guthrie Center now driving to the west basket to your left. And right off the bat it's Judy Merritt trying one. Ritlin has the rebound. And then forecourt coming with the ball. Greg. Linda Alexander with that rebound. Clifford. Merritt. Clifford. The hook shot ties the score. 35 to 35, 728 left to go in an evenly matched ball game, third quarter. Sharon Nelson to Kameen. Greg open, top of circle. Once again, they screen him out of the glass, and it's Connie Holler with the rebound to Clifford. Right side to Merritt. Nice job of rebounding by Ritland, but she loses control of the ball. Hits her on the foot, goes out of bounds. So it's a turnover. And for Guthrie Center, Vanessa Wickland will throw it in to Merritt. Back to uh, Vanessa Wickland again. Her shot is good. Guthrie Center takes the lead, 37-35. Two Central Iowa teams battling for the state championship for girls' high school basketball tonight. Kathy Kameen. She likes that flat jump shot, but it's not falling for her. Sue Taylor got that rebound, number 30. Merritt underneath her. Vanessa Whitlow pumps in two quickies. And Guthrie Center comes from behind now to take the lead. 39 to 35 in favor of Guthrie Center. Timeout called by Roland Story. Ball goes into play at the four quarter. Roland Story. The gals wearing black uniforms with white lettering and white numerals on them. Janet Gregg with the ball. He likes that shot from the top of the circle, but they screened their defender from getting it now. Here's Greg again. Kathy Kameen to Nelson. Nelson not making that fall away. Sue Taylor gave her just one shot that time to Hollard. And now across the line. Merritt over to Clifford to Merritt. Gamble for the ball out of bounds in the NHL. Number 40, Vanessa Wickland against number 21, Debbie Sampson. 5-6 against 5-5. Five, five. Guthrie Center controls it. Merritt has it. Vanessa Wickland. To Clifford. Ball slapped away. Nice bit of defensive work there by Ritlin. Going story in four court with it. Kathy coming to Greg. Here's the shot by Greg. Rebound by Nelson. Out to Kameen. To Nelson. They're really overplaying her. He shoots over the head of Connie Hollard and pops it through. 39-37. Guthrie Center with the lead. They have the ball. Merritt. Wickland. And that's the Wickland. Puts Guthrie Center out in front now by four. 41-37. 5-14 to play third period. Nelson with the ball. Now to come in, Sharon Nelson, Kathy come in, Janet Gregg. Now one of the big differences is that set shot of hers hasn't been dropping. So in the fourth court again now for Guthrie Center, it's Wickland with the ball over to Merritt. Merritt knocked down, action continues, Brockman with the rebound, 0-1. Nelson, Gregg. To come in. Kathy come in. Comes through and it's a two point game again. Got through center 41. Rolling story 39. Clifford with the ball. Hangs on the lip of the basket and once again Ripplin just takes that ball right away on the rebound and fires it into four court. Greg over to come in. To Greg. And Greg down the lane ties the score. She's fouled. Rolling story could go ahead. The basket counts. Foul is on Holler. Those are how fast the fortunes of basketball warfare can change. Connie Holler charged with a foul, and right now, Rolling Story has come from four points down to take a one point lead, 42 to 41. A nice passing there by the guards of Guthrie's. They get it into fourth court. Tiger Ritz at it. Almost goes out of bounds. Merritt. Clifford. Back to Merritt again. 
Shoots over Bradford's head, and once again, Rittman's waiting for that ball when it comes off. Kameen to Greg and back to Kameen, and now to Nelson. Sharon Nelson's shot, no good. Rebounded this time, uh, Linda Alexander. Clifford. Down in Wicklow. Jump ball, or is it going to be a foul? It's a foul. Oh, uh, got three centers, Vanessa Wicklow. Nobody in any real fouling danger. Uh, only one guard has three fouls or more. Timeout is gone by Guthrie Center. With the score, Roland Story 42, Guthrie Center 41. Jim Rick Hanson just called timeout to settle Judy Merritt down. She's a little perturbed with herself. She's missed about four or five straight. And coaches know how much a good shooter can be riled by misses. It can make them very tight. So they can't hit anything. Here's Kathy Kameen at the line. Kathy now notches her 23rd point. 43 to 41, a two-point lead for Roland Story. Merritt to Clifford. Ball slapped away by Ritman, and she realized she committed a foul right there. Oh, the line will be Wickland with one shot. Vanessa Wickland puts it through the hoop. 43 to 42 score. Rowan Story in the lead. Ball across the line. Nelson to Cummings. Kathy Cummings. She's fouled. Foul is on number 22, Linda Alexander. That's her third foul, I believe, Larry, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's three, Jim. All right, at the line now, it's Cummings. She hits it and makes it 44 to 42. She now has 24 points. Both free throws are good. Roland Story leading by three. 45 42. 3 0 3 to play. Third period here in the championship game. Clifford with the ball. Merritt. It's no good. She's still having trouble finding the hoop. And Ritman once again takes the rebound. Almost deflected out of bounds. Sharon Nelson takes it to Greg. Kathy Kameen decides to try the long one. And is it going to go in? It doesn't go in. Sue Taylor off for the rebound, number 30. Wicklund. Merritt. Wicklund. And it's 45 44, rolling story by one. The Norsemen have the ball in four court. Nelson over to Greg. Kameen. Kameen travels with the ball. Family call. 45 to 44 score. 2.15 to play. In the third quarter, Guthrie Center down by one has the ball. High lob pass across the line. Clifford. Clifford puts his team back in front. The basket counts. She's fouled. Foul by Debbie Sampson. So all of a sudden, Guppy Center down by four, comes back, they lead by one, and she makes this, they lead by two. Three fouls on Sampson. Guppy Center now leading by two, 47 to 45. Ball intercepted by Wickland. Clifford shot, puts Guppy up now by four, 49 to 45. Well, I've talked about a game of turnarounds. This one has definitely been it. Nelson to Greg to Kameen. Rolling story with the ball. Here's Nelson. Kameen to Greg. Highly guarded. They're not giving her that free throw shot she likes so well. Out to Kameen. Greg. Nelson's fall away jumper, and it's good. 49 to 47. Guthrie Center leading by two. Merritt has the ball for the Tigerettes. 117 to play third quarter. Clifford back to Merritt. Merritt can't seem to find that range. Off for the rebound, Debbie Sampson. The Ritland and back to Sampson again. Sampson travels with the ball. Well, that shows you what harassment and good defensive play by the forwards can do. That's one of the hallmarks of your good teams in state tournament play. The forwards play a lot of defense and do a lot of rebounding. Those second and third efforts. And both these teams are gifted at that. Vanessa Wickland. 
for Guthrie. He shot a little hastily that time, and Sampson is off for the rebound. Karen Ritland takes it. Now to Kameen. Rolling story trailing by two has the ball in four court. Sam er, Nelson shoots. Ball just dribbled right up at the top there. Sue Taylor took the rebound, number 30, and Vanessa Wickland has it. Over to Merritt. Clifford. Underneath. Fouled by Debbie Sampson. 30 seconds to play. Third quarter. Score. Guthrie Center 49. Rolling story 47. Shot is good at the free throw line by Clifford. Out of the backcourt now. Rolling story with the ball. Carolyn Peter it comes into the backcourt and now ball is intercepted. But violation called and so it's going to be rolling stories. Here's Janet Gregg. Nelson off for the rebound. She's tied up. Tommy Holler. Looks like she may have hurt her back there. I guess she's okay. She'll jump against Nelson, the tallest girl in the court at six feet even. Gregg, Kameen. Great wrist action shot by Kathy Kameen. She just extends her arms and flicks that ball up there. 50 to 49. Got three by one. There's the end of the third quarter and the score. Got the center 50. Rolling story 49. In exactly eight minutes of playing time from now, we will know the 1972 champion of Iowa girls basketball because we're entering the fourth and final quarter. Eight minutes of playing time remain. And the ball is put into play. Got three centers forward court. Here's Merritt with it. She finds the range again. Judy Merritt picks up her 16th point. Three-point lead for Guthrie Center, 52 to 49. Underneath, Kameen shoots, and she can try to score if she makes the free throw here. Basket count. Foul is called on Lynn Alexander. It's a 52 to 51 game. Four fouls on Linda Alexander. Kameen. Fails to tie the score. Connie Hollard has the rebound. Sue Taylor. Linda Alexander. Now over the line. Judy Merritt. On the front again. Vanessa Wickland. Nice job of rebounding. By Janice Brothen. Karen Redland. Camille. To Greg. Back to Kameen again. There's that shot by Kathy Kameen. She puts Roland Story ahead, 53 to 52. Seven minutes to play. Clifford. Ritland tips the ball away. Great job of rebounding. Look how fast she gets into the forward court. Crowd going wild up here. Greg with the ball. Over to Kameen. Here's that shot by Kameen. It's good. Kathy Kameen firing it in. 32 points for Kameen. 55-52. The turnabout game turns about once again, and Guthrie Center calls timeout with the score. Lower story 55, Guthrie Center 52. Kathy Kameen leads all scores on the board with 32. Judy Merritt has 16. Vanessa Wickland 23 for Guthrie Center. Guthrie Center has the ball in four court. And here's Judy with the ball. Clifford takes it. Clifford again. Open shot, Wickland coming up here. They pulled their guards out of position there and uh, got it through the hoop. 55-54, rolling story by one. Nelson to Kameen, there it is, and over the top and down this time. Taylor takes the rebound, and she's fouled by number 43, Janet Gregg. 43 black. One shot. Merritt can tie it. Judy Merritt at the line. Ernament Queen, scoring leader for her team. Single-handedly kept him in action against Minneapolis in that triple overtime the other day. They rebound the shot. Tipped away. Ripman comes up with it. Aggressive work by the guards of Roland Story. 
Now the Norsemen have it at four court. Over to Greg. Come in. And they call Come in for charging. Kathy Come in. Charging foul. That's an offensive foul. They had possession, so they lose the ball. It won't be a shot foul. Hollard uh, in now to Linda Alexander across the line. But that's the Wicklund. Nice job of blocking that shot by Karen Redland. That Redland's playing some basketball, you know, Larry? Yes, she is. Yes, she is, Jim. Now Judy Merritt goes out of the game. Tip on the jump ball. Roland Story has it. Come in. Nelson, fall away. Oh, man. Halfway through the hoop and back out again. Linda Alexander doing such a great job of rebounding for Guthrie as she throws it into forecourt. Vanessa Wickland. A scramble, and Wickland comes up with it again. We're going to go through or not? Look at that ball hanging up there. Woo, how agonizing that is. Second time by Wickland. It goes through. Nancy Wickland is also in that lineup, 15 years old, a 10th grader, number 34, comes into the forecourt replacing Merritt. Pilot through by Nelson. Nelson was going to swing around and try a pilot through a charging foul on Nelson. Nelson charged with a foul. Got the center lead, 56-55. Judy Merritt's out of this game, Larry. For the first time uh, in the three previous games she's played, she hasn't been out. Yes, she is, Jim. She... Uh... Only has one field goal in the second half right now. Uh, Vanessa Wicklund's keeping Guthrie in the ballgame with 26 points. All right. Wrap them up for the rebound. The free throw no good. Roland Story trailing by one. They have it at four court. Kathy Kameen underneath to Sharon Nelson. Back to Kameen again. Greg takes it. That's the shot she likes. That two-headed set shot from about the free throw line distance. 57-56. Roland Story back in front by one. Clifford with the ball. Vanessa Wicklund. Wicklund driving. And they're giving her just one shot now as Wicklund comes off of that rebound. They're going to pick it in the fourth court. Greg with it. Underneath the Kameen. There's that follow-away jump shot. 59 to 56. A three-point lead now for Roland Story with four minutes to play. Unmolested shot by Clifford. And she got around Wicklund that time and popped it through. 59 to 58. Just as even and well played as everybody predicted it would be. Nelson over to Kameen to Greg. There it goes. 61 to 58. Roland Story leading by three. 344 to play. Clifford with the ball for the Tigerettes. Nancy Wickland has it, drops it, picks it back up again. Almost gets caught in three seconds. They try to catch her in the middle there. The ball is loose. Can she get it? She gets it. They're trying to call timeout over there. Got the center back. So it is. A timeout. Called by Guthrie Center with Roland Story leading 61 to 58. Guthrie <laughs> Center and Roland Story, two Cinderella teams. If they've ever had two meet for the state championship, and it's kind of a rarity, usually one of the teams is an established power all season. These were unrated teams that really came to the forefront as they came down the tournament trail. Judy Merritt, number 42, out to Clifford. Back to Wickland. Wickland against Ritland goes in, and they don't make it. Batham gets the rebound. Let's see now whether Roland Story puts the ball in deep freeze, or whether they try to continue to score. Greg almost loses the ball. Nelson, and Nelson shot. No good. Sue Taylor with it. In the fourth court for Guthrie again. Clifford, Vanessa Wickland. Ball batted around, but it's Guthrie retrieving it. Judy Merritt. He fails to get it, but Whitler puts the triple through. Eight second effort. Seven and uh, 239 to play. Rowan Story 61 and Guthrie Center 60. Open shot by Nelson. It goes through. 63 to 60, a real scorcher. 224 to play, Roland Story leading. Guthrie Center has the ball. Merritt open, shoots, scores. Whistle blows, basket counts. Fire is called. A pushing off foul called on Clifford. 
So the basket could be nullified here with a one and one shot at the other end by Kameen. 63 62. She'll get two shots. Foul was on Clifford, number 10. Had to come in, number 55 will shoot. Roland Story is the three time state softball champion, and Kameen is one of the stars of that team, as is Nelson. Second shot, no good. Look at that rebound job out there as Linda Alexander pegs it into four court. Vanessa Wicklow to Judy Merritt to Clifford. Barb Clifford has it, two minutes to play. Clifford to Merritt. Back to Clifford. To Merritt. Not giving Merritt much uh, breathing space there. Now here's Wicklow with the ball. Falls down. Clifford. Ball is battled momentarily. Picks back up. Here's Clifford. Wicklow. Ball beautifully blocked out there. Great blocked out there for Roland Story by Gerald Peter. Roland Story has the basketball and a two point lead. Jim, they don't have good speed in their front court, and uh, through experience, Jim or uh, Bill feels this is the best thing to do. All right, here's Nelson with the ball now. They're going to probably work for the inside shot if they can get it. Nelson out to Greg. Come in, in and under. Captain Come in, shoot. And that could be one of the key buckets of the entire game. 66 62. Roland Story by four points. Tifford with the ball. Back to Merritt. Down the lane. Merritt. Hits the punch basket again, as she did so well all through this tournament. One minute exactly on that scoreboard clock. 66 64. Roland Story has the lead of two points. Kathy Kameen has the basketball. Now it's over to Nelson. Sharon Nelson. Back to Janet Gregg. Kameen tries the shot. It is good. Ooh, yeah, that was one of the hard stopper. 40 seconds to play. 39 seconds to play. Four point lead for Roland Story. The place is Bedlam. Shot is up. Down. Out of bounds. It will be Guthrie Center's ball in four court. Vanessa Lickland will throw it in. 32 seconds to play. Roland Story leads by four. Judy Merritt has it. But they got her pinned down to the corner. Clifford on about a 20 footer. In and out. And that looks like it may be the ball game. Janice Crawford or Karen Ripley's got the rebound. Right out is called by Roland Story. 21 seconds to play. Roland Story 68. Guthrie Center 64. Yeah, let's see there. Okay, here we go. Deciding how they're going to break. They do break. Greg takes the ball. To Kameen. Kameen is open. Drives down. Lays it up. The shot is no good. Followed through by Greg. No good. The ball is loose. Who's going to get it? In the fourth court. Ten seconds to play. Merritt has it. Merritt shoots. No good. And the ball comes down. Four seconds to play. Merritt again shoots. This one is still no good. And Merritt Stoney wins. Stoney defeats Guthrie Center. The championship. And it's too bad in a game like this, Larry, that either team had to lose. Went back and forth and went. Beautiful ball game to watch. Roland Story winning it 68 to 64. And so a real Cinderella tale reaches a fitting climax tonight as Roland Story, a school organized just three years ago, comes from behind to defeat a tough, organized Guthrie Center team 664 to win the championship behind the 39-point shooting of sensational Kathy Kameen. And who knows, we may see this team again. Kathy will be returning, so will two of their starting guards, and give tremendous credit to a great Guthrie Center team.